Dr. Owusu or Chalk. It's Dr. O for the 804. As the premier knee and hip shoulder sports surgeon, Virginia, I would like to remind you that health equals power. Sports build and uplift communities. Nothing else can. The mission of sports medicine is to keep athletes of all ages and levels at the top of their game. Dr. O is located at Ortho, Virginia, Schrader Road, office location. Appointments can be scheduled online at orthovirginia.com or by calling 804-939-6688. You can follow Dr. O on Instagram at Dr. O underscore for the 804 and uplifting educational content about sports health. Hi, everyone. I'm Coach Rick Stockel. I am co-owner of Newman and Dunn Real Estate here in Central Virginia, as well as I am a high school boys basketball coach at Monacan High School. I've sold over 1,300 homes here in Central Virginia, and I would love to work with you and your family in your home buying needs. Uh, I am a proud primary sponsor of Ballin in Virginia, and I hope you enjoy this show. Welcome to another episode of Ball in the VA. It's been a while, y'all. Today, I have, this is a very special guest. I know sometimes I'd be saying it's very special, but today I got a special guest today. It's Karen Bettis Davis. She is an author. She is a wife, mother, and for y'all may notice the Bettis name, you know, she is the sister of Coach Kevin Bettis at John Marshall High School. What's going on, Miss Lady? How you doing? I'm good. I'm excited to be here. Now, you know we got to start off telling everybody how we met, right? Because, right. <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm going to let you do it because, you know, if, if I go into it, they're going to think I'm trying to make this up. So I'm going to let you say it because, you know, I didn't ever think we was going to be at this point. Right. I never thought that in a million years, but I'm going to let you go ahead and you got it because, you know, you got the upper hand right now. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I am uh, currently uh, a member of the, I think it's called uh, the Real Prince William County Sports Chat. Yeah. Um, I was a chaplain at uh, Freedom High School for two years and Lee came, on, came into our chat, into <laughs> our domain, came over here to the 703 and started talking trash about us being scared to play. Uh, <laughs> Highland Springs. Highland Springs. And I, you know, and I said, we don't duck anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and so we started this exchange and uh, people were, you know, they they thought that, you know, we were a little serious, serious. but we were just kind of talking trash backwards and forwards. And then eventually we just kind of started laughing about it. Yep. Everybody else was serious about it, but we started laughing about it. Yep. And then we started meeting. And then I noticed that the coaches at Freedom had come to the broadcast. Mm -hmm. And um, Coach uh, Brendan Hughes, my dude, he's like, oh, he's a really, really good guy. That's my guy. So I told him, I said, you know, we had this little thing, but, you know, it just kind of brought us together. You know, I I, I think a lot of times, uh, and not you, mm -hmm. but I think a lot of times, especially in that particular group, mm -hmm. um, because I am so vocal. Yeah, yeah. Um, that a lot of times men get upset because oh, they, they think, how is it that this woman is doing all this talking, but they don't realize that, you know, I grew up with a father that was a coach. Mm -hmm. um, my uncles were coaches. My brothers are coaches. My son is a coach. Mm -hmm. I was an athlete. I played basketball at Phoebus High School. Seven, five, um, seven, seven, five, seven. You know, I have two sons, but I was their basketball coach when they were growing up. So I was a coach. Okay. And then I started with Coach Daryl Overton as a team mom when my youngest son was 11. So Coach Overton and I have been together for about 12 years. Oh, wow. See. And so... Uh, watching my my own son, Christopher Davis, who is the offensive coordinator at Freedom High School mm -hmm. and the O-line coach. So watching them learning, I was always one of those people where if somebody that I love was involved in something, I wanted mm -hmm. to know everything about it. And then I'm the only girl in my family. All of my brothers play sports and my dad wow. coached. So I've grown up around sports. Yeah, because cause, um, Brendan was like, Man, I've been seeing you. You've been arguing with Miss Karen on the oh, and on the check. I was like, man, we ain't arguing, man. We going back and forth. It's funny that me and you just kind of yeah. like, we we we. I guess we kind of knew each other. Yeah. Just that we kind of felt the vibe. Yeah. But people didn't know because everybody take things so seriously yeah. and for face value. I'm like, we just having fun. 
But then I was like, no, nah. I said, no, nah, man. I said, I like that lady, man. I said, but she winning right now. I said, I can't, I can't win, but I'm gonna talk about my trash. And then your son that I didn't know came over to my live one night and said that we was gonna put belt them ass <laughs> to Hollow Springs. And me and Harry Lee were like, whoa, wait a minute. So they didn't know that was your son. Yeah. Then I go to a John Marshall game mm -hmm. and I met your brother for the first yes. time. After, after, immediately after y'all beat Hollow Springs, yes. I drive to DC yeah. to John Marshall playing Sidwell and I finally get to meet your brother Kevin yes. for the first time. I was like, oh my God. I was like, that's your sister? I'm like, oh man. You know, I'm like, all right, I, I can't win, bro. So I'm his was, big sister. I was able to see your big sister, see? <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute. I'm like, all right, man. And, 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 you know, and, and me and him have a, uh, a great relationship. He called yeah. me. Everything. He he liked to gaslight, like, too. He's a great guy, though. He, he, he really is. He'll be but like, yeah, oh, he, me. We get that from my father now. Yeah, because, see, you we, do that, too. We can too. go now. Yeah, y'all be like, he be like, Lee, yeah, you know, um, don't you tell these people about John Marshall. You know, I'll be like. That is, you, you you tripping, right? <laughs> like, come on, like, come on, coach, you tripping. So I'm just glad that y'all y'all have a great family, and I'm just so glad that you and I we've connected. Yeah. And now I call you to consult you about some things because you be kind of keeping me out of trouble. Yeah. And you be like, no, no, don't don't do that, or you know, this how you go about it. So like, you're my counsel now. I appreciate that. And, and no, but I'm gonna tell you what what really got me. When you told me, you said, you one of us now. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute, I'm on the outside. But she was like, no. Because I guess, I, I, hey, when y'all won, I shook everybody's hand. Yeah. And I went over to the other side and was like, hey, y'all got it. Yeah. I ain't going to run from the smoke. But no, but you embraced me. So I, I thank you. Well, thank you know, so one much. of the things being around football and being around my boys taught me mm -hmm. was that, um, you know, kids grow up. They go to play different teams. Mm -hmm. They fight it out on the field. When mm -hmm. the game is over, they're in the middle of the field taking pictures, yep. hand, you know, uh, dapping it up. The parents are on the sideline mad. Right. You know, oh, because man. the kids lost. And so I noticed that football really creates a family. Yep, it does. And so you learn that those things aren't all that serious. Mm -hmm. Now, I have to say that, you know, um, being at Freedom, you know, with Coach Overton from the beginning – you know, we experienced a lot of backlash, a lot of hate, a lot of crazy investigations. And um, and there are people inside of those chats who constantly, you know, uh, put out these microaggressions. You know, I think you've seen a few where, you know, one guy, he was constantly calling us villains because yep. we were winning and things of that nature. And, you know, it got to be personal for yep. them. It got to be racial for them. Yep. And the one thing that you don't do is mess with my boys. No, you was coming. You was everywhere. I was like, who is this lady? Right? Yep. Like, she just keep coming. Yep. And I know I was trying to keep it clean, but like a lot of people were attacking you, yeah, saying that you know you're a woman, you need to stay in a woman's place, yeah. And I was like, wait a minute, now that's one kind of, of them so even far. said you're a pastor. Why are you here? Where pastors don't like sports, right? Because we because we preach on Sunday, we're not allowed to have an opinion about a play. Yeah, let's go into that. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. And 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 I was like, wait a minute, like okay, y'all going too far. Yeah, we're real people, right. and. We were in the fight where we knew that the refs, we didn't choose them to be our refs. Mm -hmm. um, they were chosen for us. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they were making bad calls. They were putting our, our kids in a position to be hurt. Mm -hmm. um, there were things that they were allowing that should have never been allowed. Mm -hmm. And even if we did win by 50, I don't think that any referee mm -hmm. should stand by and, and allow other children to do things that could possibly injure a player mm -hmm. um, and possibly end their career. I think that their job is to keep the integrity on the football field. And when they're not doing that, somebody has to say something. And 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 that leads me to my next segue that I was going on to because you did a lot of speaking for these kids and the coaches because Daryl is known to be kind of you know he's very open and he's a very opinionated person and with you you know taking the hits for him it's like okay look you are about coaching and I'm gonna deal with this and can you talk about a lot of those things that y'all dealt with you know because he alluded to it on the, on the podcast but which I was like floored I was like y'all went through all of that. Yeah. Well, you got to understand, you know, uh, when I first met Daryl, my, my son was working out for him. Okay. And um, one of the things I knew that I wanted to be a part of whatever he was doing, mm -hmm. because when my son was 11 years old, um, we were playing for an organization called CRA. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And um, I suggested, hey, whenever we go to Florida, wherever we go, we need to do a college tour because the name of the organization was College Ready Athletes. Okay. So we wanted to take them to colleges when we travel with them. They had to have 3.0s. You know, they had to be good. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we were at University of South Florida. And my son is sitting there looking at this defensive end. And they have this life-size poster of him up there. The kid's about 280, about 6'2". And my son looks up at him and he goes, he's so, wow, he's so big. Mm. And Coach Overton looks at my son and he said, that's going to be you one day. Mm. And uh, my son is now 6'4", 280 pounds. Yeah, he's a big boy. He's a defensive end. He's going to the University of Albany. And um, to see a man that had that kind of vision for children, um, I never asked to be his team mom. He started telling people I was his team mom. My son was coming home. He was saying, hey, Coach Overson said you're the team mom. And I'm like, I hadn't even talked to him about it. But um, I always say I'm a great number two. So if you need something done, I can I can help you with that. I'm a great visionary. And so there were things like we needed fields for state championships, you know, for playoffs. I called and got us a field. Mm-hmm. You know, we needed buses. I called and, and, you know, and got us buses and things like that. And so I wanted to – he had such a great vision. I, I just wanted to be a part of it and help him to grow and develop it. And so we started that, knowing that at some point he was going to, you know, be a head coach. Mm -hmm. So he called me a couple of months before he got to Freedom, and we were talking, and he said, you know, when I get the job at Freedom, I'm taking your son Christopher with me. I said, okay. So a couple of months went by, and Chris said he never said anything to me. And I said, well, he said it to me. (laughs) You know, so a few more months went by, he got the call. They went to Freedom together. Uh, And so he was like, "I I never told you to quit. Come on with me. Wow. (laughs) So I came. And so I was a team mom when my youngest, uh, Keely Davis, was there. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that was the year we made our first state run. That was the year we took down the giant Westfield. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Westfield was winning them back then. Yes. I think they had won like two or three in a row at that point. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they were Goliath and we were David. And we walked in there and I mean, and we won. We actually played better than the score. Oh, wow. Um, But their quarterback, Noah Kim, who is one of my kids now, Mm -hmm. um, was injured. His his leg was broken. And so if you look in the Washington Post, there's a picture of me on the field praying with all the kids for Noah Kim. Um, But in the background, some woman who was not used to losing Um, decided that there needed to be an investigation. And they accused, um, you know, our linemen of what they what they said was that um, Coach Overton had given them permission to hurt the quarterback, which was a lie. He would never do that. And so they started this big investigation. Well, my child was a lineman. And so I was very upset about that because those children were shaken to their core to see something like that happen right. on the field. Um, and it was a miracle that any of those kids got up to, to you know, finish that game. But that is what champions do. Wow. And so we got up and we finished, but there was an investigation. And um, I was upset because the school never called the parents to tell them that the investigators had come in to interview our children. Wow. So I called for a meeting with the principal and the parents, and I said, listen, I don't care who else's child you bring in here without permission, but don't ever talk to my child without me being here. Because why would my child intentionally hurt another child? Why would a coach tell? And so those were the kind of investigations. And I felt like Prince William County allowed that to happen Mm -hmm. because I came from a whole nother county. They could have stopped that in the front offices. Mm -hmm. They could have had a simple conversation, but instead they came in there to traumatize those boys. And I thought that was extremely unfair. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that led to then they wanted to investigate our coaches when we were on our way to the state game. There were so many things, two or three of our coaches couldn't coach for the state game. Um, There were just a number of things that happened um, that year because we were winning. Because we went, because we started to do the thing we went there to do. And Westfield is located in what county? I believe it's Fairfax County. Oh my God. Okay, yeah, well that that explains a lot, Mm -hmm. actually. Yeah, you know, and and that's what I understand. When these teams are used to winning, then, then when they lose this particular game, then they want to 
come with some type of investigation yeah. to try to, you know, derail or demean that team that, that actually beat them for whatever reason. Alice Springs went through the same thing with Lake Braddock, and I yeah. just didn't think that was that was cool. But and then when you add the element of color to right. this, um, there's a whole nother dynamic to mm. that. Um, these are young African American men. Ninety five percent of our team are young African American men, and um, when you add that dynamic to it. You know, it's very difficult when people in power place that dynamic inside of those things. How do they fight? How do they defend themselves? Mm -hmm. What do they say? These are people, you know, who are in positions of power, but they're still, these are children. Mm -hmm. And so I just felt it was our responsibility as parents to stand in between That's right. that administration, those teachers, those whatever, and our children. Yeah, because the kids, the children don't understand or know how to go ahead and go about it. No, they that. don't. They don't yeah. know a microaggression when they see it. Right, they don't. They and don't. so you have to teach them those things, and then you have to empower them to use their voice. And see, that's that's where, you know, where you come in at, mm -hmm. and where I think from that point, I think you just kind of took it to a whole other level. Speak on some of the other things that you actually do for the programs, other things that you've actually done um, at Freedom High School. Well, two years ago, uh, my son comes in to my son comes to the house one day and he says, Mom, I'm watching uh, Clemson and I saw their team chaplain. He said, I think you make a, a great team chaplain. Mm -hmm. I'd pastor it for 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, I'd pastor at my church for a number of years. I had two or three other churches. And so I was traveling, you know, teaching. I was traveling all over the world, you know, preaching the gospel. And um, he said, Mom, I think you'd actually be great as a chaplain. Mm. And so I said, okay, so I called coach Overton mm -hmm. and I'm thinking I'm going to get some backlash about it or whatever. <laughs> yeah, and I said, yeah. Hey, I think I want to switch my position. I think I want to come in as a chaplain and I think I want to bring a mental health component in. Yes. And the reason I wanted to do that was that two years ago we had had a number of um, high profile division one athletes in Virginia who had committed suicide. Oh, wow. And um, we wanted to get ahead of that. Okay. We wanted to make sure that we had things in place for them mentally, emotionally, psychologically. Mm -hmm. um, and so I told them that, that that's what I wanted to do. And I was a guest on a program talking about athletes and mental health. Mm -hmm. And when we got done, he said, I absolutely see the vision of what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I need you to start it. Wow. And so that's how I got started as a sports chaplain for, you know, for Freedom High School. And it came at a very pivotal time because we were about to make our first run for the state championship. Okay, that was 2018, right? 2018. Right. And one of the things that I tell people all the time is being successful is one of the hardest things you'll ever do in your yes. life. Yeah. If you saw the interview last night with Angel Reese and you saw the tears oh. afterwards and she talked about the fact that after winning a national championship, it was the hardest year of her life because of all the visceral hate. Right. Um, all of the negativity, um, all of the lies, all of the things that she endured that she just had to take it on her shoulders. Mm -hmm. And for me, I never wanted our athletes to have to deal with those kinds of things alone. Right. I had watched parents when things had happened. Uh, I think it was probably 2021. I mean, 2020, mm -hmm. where we would have actually won the state championship had the administration handled the situation properly with one of our young men, Umari. Um, I can't think of his last name right now, but he's up at Syracuse right now. Okay. Um, and if he plays, we win by three touchdowns. Okay. And Daryl will tell you the story about how I stormed in his office. I was so mad. I said, <laughs> if he plays, we win by three touchdowns. Like, you have to have an administration that is that supports what you're doing. That's right. That's right. And, um, and so, but I realized how difficult it is to actually be that successful. And so I started looking at what was it that the children needed mm -hmm. emotionally and psychologically so that they could get over those hurdles. Mm. Wow. Yeah, and you and you took all of that on by yourself? Well, 
uh, initially I had a partner. Her name is Heather Hutchinson, and she still comes from time to time. Mm-hmm. Um, she has a background. She's on she's on TikTok doing phenomenal work talking about mm-hmm. um, mental health with children. Her son was diagnosed uh, with bipolar at a very young age, mm-hmm. and so she done all this research and really works in the community to help people understand mental illness in children. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she came on, you know, to be an assistant, and we talked to the boys about those things things and we started developing teaching them stress relieving exercises breathing exercises um, conflict resolution you know all of those kinds of things because one of the things that is so difficult about being a winner is that when people know they can't beat you they like to fight you yeah that's Um, true and they simply because uh, they labeled us as urban, mm-hmm. you know, um, that's one of those microaggressions for yep. y'all are black. Yep. And so they expected us to be, you know, uh, fighters, to be, right. you know, aggressive and all of those things. And to be honest, um, some of the backgrounds that the kids came from, they had every right to be angry. Mm-hmm. They had every right, you know, to be upset. They had real issues, parents that are sick. So, you know, I can remember when we, when we first started, there were children that... Um, I bought uh, uh, socks so they could play on Friday night. Mm -hmm. We bought food and made sure they could eat after the games. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we were giving groceries secretly to their parents. Mm -hmm. There were so many things that were going on in the background that most people never knew about. And if you can eliminate some of those stressors for an athlete, because the sport will take care of some of that stress on the field. Right. But if you can eliminate some of those other things, you know, um, it makes them play better. You know, one thing that I think where me and you got close, I think I did an interview with Armstrong, and you commented on the things that, you know, you you called me. You was like, hey, I'm going to call you. And you talked about the things that that coach had went through. He yeah. talked about the community, him and Miss Shia, she was here, and, and you and you was like, no, I want to stand with them. And, you know, you, you, you didn't just do it for freedom. You stepped in and you talked about the things that John Marshall does was – Principal Miss Murray and the things yes. that they're doing over there. Speak to some of those things that you know, because like I said, we we have our private conversations. Yes, but, you know, just let them know how you felt about that. Well, you know, I I love Principal Murray at John Marshall. Mm-hmm. When you talk about supporting a sports program, mm-hmm. she is the creme de la creme because what she has done is she has taken a very marginalized school mm-hmm. and she has allowed those coaches mm-hmm. to. Um, to develop a program, a winning program, a nationally winning program. Mm -hmm. And um, she allows the community to come in and support them. Mm -hmm. Um, She embraces people that embrace them. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it's such a good look. And she's a woman, you know, who's at the helm of the success that they're having, you know, at at John Marshall. And I think it's just incredible. When you go to the state championships, there's so many, you know, distinguished people in the city of Richmond that are there. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you see people uh, um, like the former lieutenant governor, you Mm -hmm. know, who... Justin Fairfax. Yeah, yeah, who got them the the custom suits. Suits. Yeah. And, um, you know, the the trip that they went to, to Africa, you know, Mm -hmm. the trip of a lifetime. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and so you show these young men that this sport has the ability to change your life. Mm -hmm. Our number one goal, um, whether we were at CRA, whether we were at PME, or whether we were at Freedom, now we're at Hayfield, Mm -hmm. is to go to college for free. That's right. Um, Coach Overton's goal is to get these children into college so that they see a whole other side of life. There are many more opportunities, their education, because people can take a lot of things away from you. You're going to hang up those cleats after a while, but nobody can ever take your education, the experiences that you have from that. And we wanted them to be able to look over the other side of the fence and mm-hmm. see what it's like to live a different life. Man, you, you, you know, you, you just hit so, so many thoughts that just came in my head just now. And you just hit that right on the money because a lot of people don't understand how expensive, how, I know I had to pay for college for my son. Mm-hmm. And I tell people all days, I said, if I could try to help you eliminate that or direct it to some people who can, you know, why is it that people in that community kind of frown upon that? And I just never understood that when they think because you haven't done it, 
Mm-hmm. They will sit up here and say, okay, well, since you haven't done it, you can't help me any kind of way. Well, maybe if I, because I haven't done it, but because I learned from my mistakes, maybe I could point you to the right direction. Yeah, sure. I, I, I don't, I've never understood that, you know, but you talked about going to freedom, I mean, to Hayfield now and the administration. How has the administration have embraced you guys? It has been um, amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I the changeover was so quick. It was so beautiful. It was so smooth. Mm-hmm. I, uh, when we went to our first meeting, um, I leaned over to Coach Jeff Overton, oh and God. I said, it feels like Colorado in here. See what I'm saying? It feels See like for the first time that they're listening to what we think makes a great program, mm-hmm. that we don't have to – Lee, for so long, the parents raised money for uniforms at Freedom. Can you believe that? No, I cannot. I, I can, you say it, but no. That, that We were buying uniforms for, for our team. But why should the, the parents have to do that? That's a good question. Shouldn't that be on a school? I would think so. Wouldn't you think that the schools say that the kid that 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 they're away? First of all, y'all only had like 40 or 50, 50 kids on the team. Yeah, we only had about fifty five kids. So for us to win was was really um, a mammoth win. Like it was much bigger than what people can even imagine. Mm-hmm. Basically, we did all of that. We won two state championships with basically a core of about thirty six athletes. Wow. And I, and I know you talked about, and you, and you told me, you said, Lee, you just don't know what some of these kids have been through. Yeah. And you, and you talked about that. I was like, well, you know, kind of go into that, you know, and, and you talked to me. And I was like, wow, he went through that. He went yeah. through that. Oh, this kid went through that. And I'm just like, wow. People will never know the things that those children endure. One of our star players, when we're getting ready to go into the state championship this year, um, there was an incident, a shooting that happened over the summer. And um, there was an accidental release of a report. He was not a shooter. He was not, in, you know, he was not involved, but mm-hmm. he was there. Uh, and uh, his name was in the report. And because he's a juvenile, that name was supposed to have been redacted. Mm-hmm. Well, it wasn't. Wow. And so his name was released. There were threats all over Instagram. Um, he has a wonderful father, but the father has a military history with PTSD and some of those things. Right. And so I reached out to the father to see how he was handling all of that. I had to reach out to the to the student to see where his mind was and how he was. Um, and then I actually had to use my resources to call the police a friend of mine, Officer Mangrum, to have him to call the police, to call the Commonwealth to find out who released his name and who is now going to protect this child. Right. And so I'm making phone calls. I'm talking to everyone in the Eastern District in the police. I'm talking to the Commonwealth's attorney's office. I'm talking to, you know, the sheriff's office. I'm talking to all of these people. And the only people that would not have a conversation with me were the was the school officials. What? What? So why was this this big strain? Well, their answer was, I'm not the parent that they couldn't talk to me. But all I wanted to tell them was that I had spoken to the parent who had given them permission to talk to me. Could you please contact him so that he can give you permission? Because we have talked, we have spoken to the police. We have spoken with the Commonwealth's attorney. And we need to make sure that this child is protected. And they didn't want to do that. And they didn't want to talk to me. Uh, And so he... You know, he can imagine that you're playing for a state championship mm-hmm. and you got to leave your home and go to someplace safe. But also you've got to come to school. Right. And you've got to walk through school with children calling you names, you know, people calling you snitches, you know, mm-hmm. all of these terrible things. But you've also have to have the mindset to win. Mm-hmm. And so calling him every night, talking to him taking him through breathing exercises, teaching him how to calm down his nervous system, allowing him to express whatever emotion that he needed to express Mm -hmm. um, in that moment. Um, But then watching that kid, being able to turn all of that off and probably play one of the best games of his life. Mm. That's what makes what I do worth it for me. 
Yeah, because we didn't know what type of role. We just thought you were just some crazy lady. Yeah. That was out there. And and then Brenda was like, no, man, she's our team champion. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay. And even BT, you know. But you guys were so close-knit. Mm-hmm. And I just thought it was just like, okay, well, they just, you know, it, it, it's that kind of like what we thought it was. Mm-hmm. But you guys, it was really much bigger than that. And I learned a lot. And when I, especially after the game was over or during the game, when the mm-hmm. game was down and how that community embraced me and my son yeah. when we walked over there. And I was like, wow, they, they're not like what I thought they were. No. You know, because I yeah. we need the support. Yeah. And and they was like, oh, man, we like what you do. And didn't realize that he, I don't watch, you know, ball in the V. I said, look, I, I, I'm watching Freedom by 40, you know, just trying to learn what that's all about. Because I yeah. didn't understand that whole, you know, moniker, what that was all about. But... No, when when you broke it down to me, I was very grateful and appreciate what you did, and and then you like I said, you'll just call me. And we just talked to each other about a lot of different things that you was gonna help me with, and which we're gonna go into today, you know, um, which you get to my next thing. Women in sports, so women now in the modern era where we at now. Yeah, let's let's talk about that because. A lot of people still have a lot of problems with women being in the forefront of things now. They do. Why do you think that is? Well, you know, I think we live in a very uh, patriarchal, um, misogynistic, and um, colonialized society. Um, I think that um, even for black men, you know, there's still struggles in those areas, but um, I always say the only thing that is hated in America more than a black man is a black woman. Mm-hmm. And um, we have to understand that that we are marginalized, even being a pastor, mm-hmm. developing churches, covering churches. I still experience, you know, sexism, misogyny, things of that nature. Um, and so we just live in a world where we have these very archaic roles about where people should sit, what they should do, what they have a right to say or not say, how a woman should behave or not behave. Um, And so all of those things, you know, we have to contend with those things. Mm -hmm. And so um, it was funny because one of the guys that decided to troll me, I was talking about the refs and he said, well, why don't you be a ref? Well, what he didn't know was that at one point I was a ref. At one point (laughs) in my life, I was also a lifeguard, you know, but also, you know, I coached um, youth boys basketball, Mm -hmm. Um, whatever I needed to do in order to be in my children's life and to be supportive um, I would do that. We won, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that matters. I was going to ask you, did you win? Oh, yeah. A lot we, of people say they can coach and that stuff, but did you win? We won, by the way. Okay, okay. Uh, and, um, you know, so we're watching the emergence of women step into these roles that aren't traditionally roles. We're watching women becoming coaches in the NFL. It has always been my dream to be uh, an NFL chaplain. That is wow. that is my goal. Yep, we got to talk about that. And, um, you know, because, again, I grew up with brothers. I don't have, you know, any uh, natural sisters. I, okay. I grew up in a household full of boys. So I understand the complexity of what it is to be a man. Mm-hmm. My brothers were athletes. Kevin was a great football player at Hampton University. Okay. And um, and so, you know, to watch what it means to be successful, um, the stress that's involved in that, Mm -hmm. all of the moving parts that most people never see Mm -hmm. in order for an athlete to get on the field and to perform at their max level. People underestimate the mental strength that it takes to actually be a champion. And so growing up and watching that, and my father, it was win or go home, period. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, y'all down 757 too. Yeah. Yeah, it's different. It's different. Yeah, and you know, we 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 played at Phoebus. He played football at Phoebus. I played basketball at Phoebus under Coach Mike Talent, mm-hmm. who was still one of my really good friends and supporters to this day. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, we knew the Boo Williams of the world, uh, Howard White that went to University of Maryland mm-hmm. um, and now is the president of Jordan Brand. Jordan Brand. Uh, man, we used to go to Howard's house and we had all the latest tennis shoes. I think I had the first pair of Jordans before they ever came out. <laughs> wow. Um, you know, and so um, my life, I was just always around sports. Mm-hmm. And so for me, it's natural. To other people, they think it's strange. But to me... 
it's just my natural life. Yeah, but because you balance it, you you kind of you wear a lot of different hats, and you don't seem to be stressed out, or you 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 look very well. You you look healthy. You don't you don't you know how people we do. It's yeah. Like, okay, well, I don't. You know, you the thing they said that women should be heard or not seen, seen and not, seen, not heard. Seen, not heard. Yeah. Yeah. But my, yeah. that's not how my dad raised me. First of all, my dad told me that a pretty woman ought to be a little mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then he told me that um, he would rather um, that people dislike me because I was powerful and smart mm -hmm. than for me to ever dumb down for anyone. That's right. He didn't say it quite as he said a little more colorful than that. But I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> but he said I'd rather for people to think um, that you're smart and powerful and they should be afraid of you than for them to think that they can run all over you. And so that's how he raised me. Wow. Wow. And you, like I say, your brothers. You said, how many brothers you had again? Seven, three. Three. Wow. Man. Mm, 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 mm. And a tough dad. And a tough dad. You know. And then, and where did you go to college? Um, I went to Hampton. You went to Hampton too. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that's why Coach mm -hmm. Bettis always be talking about Hampton all the time. Could never date a soul. <laughs> the next time you see him, you ask him how many boyfriends he threatened, <laughs> just because he saw me out in the yard with somebody. Had had to get a boyfriend out of town. It's uh, a wonder I got married. That, that, that's usually how it works. Yeah. Like okay, you can't date nobody right here. No, you got to go yes. date somebody else. Wow. Oh, yeah, you know I got the best. Matter of fact, I'm going to call him after this episode. I'm going to give him something the best way. Like, so, Dad, so, so, now, then, so now you got this book. You, you, what, did, what, what, what made you decide to write books? Go on to that. Well, my mother had always dreamed of being an author. My mother was an English teacher. She taught middle school and then she taught college. Both of my parents, my father was in the military, but both my parents taught college at night. And, oh, wow. um, and so my mother had always talked about writing books. And uh, when I started pastoring, people would say to me, I really, you know, I love your teaching. Why don't you write a book? Why don't you write a book? And so one night in Bible study, we started talking about prayer and God just started to talk to me. And most people, they have a very simple form of prayer. Most people don't even understand that the prayer model that we use in the, Ameri in, in the United States today was developed in 1833. Mm -hmm. And we have not had a new model of prayer since then. Mm -hmm. We use this, this acts, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. But, you know, just like in sports, and one of the reasons why I love sports is that there is an enemy. There is an opponent. Mm -hmm. In salvation, Satan is our enemy. He's the opponent. Mm -hmm. We're on God's team. Mm -hmm. And just like in football, you have to gain the advantage over the defense. Mm -hmm. And so um, I started writing this book about prayer, which in in, included spiritual warfare okay. because Jesus said he was finished, but he said, I came to destroy the works of the devil. And then, um, you know, he said, greater work shall you do in my name. And then on the cross, the last thing that he said on the cross is that it is finished, meaning I'm finished. Now it's your turn. Mm -hmm. And so most people don't really realize that salvation is also uh, an invitation to join a spiritual army. Mm -hmm. And there's not you you can't call an army an army that doesn't fight, that doesn't have any weapons. That's right. And unfortunately, most people in the body of Christ, they want to come in and they want to be saved. But they don't realize that the moment that you get saved, that there is a target on you now from the enemy and you have to learn to fight back. You have to be strategic. You have to understand your enemy. You have to understand that you're in a battle and you and you have to strategize in order to win. Satan's job is to kill, steal and destroy. Mm -hmm. And if you don't step in it with your power and the authority that Jesus Christ has given you, you are going to lose. Mm -hmm. And I don't like to lose. You know, I, wait, yeah, I found that out the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it all the way. So to talk about, th th this is one of your first books. This is my first wrote, book. And it was called Arm. It's entitled Arm. Um, um, and it's a mo it's actually a model. It means um, affirmation, repentance, meditation, engage in spiritual warfare, and destroy the works of the devil. Mm -hmm. It's an acronym, acronym, and it is a model mm -hmm. for prayer in order for you to see success in your prayer. Mm -hmm. Because I can ask God to heal my body all I want to. Mm -hmm. But if I never tell Satan to leave my body alone, mm -hmm. I never get healed. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. See, that's deep. That's, that's, that's really deep. 
And how long? And when did you begin? And when did you? When did? When was this published? Um, that book came out in 2019, mm-hmm. and just as soon as I started the book tour, mm-hmm. the pandemic happened. Oh wow! <laughs> wow! That that man! That oh god! So, you know, but I knew God had told me to write it. I knew that he said it was going to bless people. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's amazing. Um, Every now and then I get those I get those checks and I don't want to say little checks, but I get checks from Amazon and I find that countries like Canada. Yeah, we um, talked about that. Europe, you know, purchases my books. Um, Now uh, people in Australia are purchasing um, the book. Sometimes I'll go on YouTube and I find people that are on there that are teaching my book in their language. Mm-hmm. And so God told me, he said, more people are going to hear you than will ever meet you. And so he started teaching me to write. Mm-hmm. And then um, this year, <clears throat> one of my favorite uh, kids at Freedom High School, his name is Kendall Bannister. Okay. Um, he graduated from Freedom and he was such a success story because he worked so hard to, you know, to win his position, to win his scholarship. He's at the University of Ohio okay. now. And, you know, when you're used to winning like we're used to winning at Freedom, mm-hmm. I tell people all the time, when you lose for the first time in college, mm-hmm. it's a mind trip. So it's, it's definitely a mind And trip. so whenever I always have dinner with all my seniors okay. before they leave, and I give them my book on prayer, and I give them my Bible. And I tell them, when you take that first L, you're going to call me. Oh, wow. And so he was on the bus and he called me. I said, you're doing okay? He was like, no, I'm not doing okay. And he was like, and they all right with losing. Like he was mad. And I told him, I said, it's a transition. Mm -hmm. It's a business now. And so, you know, there are some that have had Cinderella stories, you know, when they've gone to school. Mm-hmm. My son, he chose to go to Hutchinson Community College. Mm-hmm. When he when he graduated in 2020, he made that his choice. He gets there. They had never been voted number one preseason. They were voted number one preseason. Um, they had a perfect 10-0 and season that year, and they won a national championship. Oh, wow. Uh, T.J. Bush graduated a uh, year before last from Freedom High School. He was going to go to eat to Coastal Carolina, the coach switched over and took the job at Liberty. He goes to Liberty. They enter into that. I think it's the CUSA. Mm-hmm. They have, you know, they go 10 and 0 and they win their conference. Yep. You know, those are the miracle stories that you hear about. I, I tell both of them that is when the favor of God is on your life mm-hmm. because that is not real football. Right, right. At one point, you're going to lose. And when you take that first loss and you come from a program like Freedom, when you're used to winning and winning big, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is that is an emotional journey. And so I talked to him on the bus and he said to me and, you know, and then he's there, you know, he's used to being a man, you know, and now he's co- competing and you got grown men out here now that you're competing with. Mm-hmm. And so he was trying to get his mind together about waiting his turn. And so he said to me, he said, will you just kind of send me a scripture every day? And I said, Yes. And so I started first, I started sending him just a scripture with just a little understanding of it. Mm-hmm. And then I started writing him a devotional every day. Oh, wow. And then I started writing devotionals for T.J. Bush and then Josh Fugel, which is my my son's son, my son's best friend. Um, we always talked about, you know, uh you know, his relationship with Christ. And so I started writing these athletes, these devotionals every day. Wow. And so for a year. Through the whole football season, they got a devotional every day. They would respond back with questions. They would respond back with what they got from it. Mm -hmm. You know, they would tell me, thank you. We would have interaction, you know, um, with it. And one day I realized, Karen, you're writing another book. Yeah, see, and that's what I'm saying. I, I, I was looking at some of your social media and seeing how these kids embrace you. I see how you at their... Uh, at the the ring ceremonies, and yes. at their graduations, mm-hmm. and a lot of stuff like that. People talk about it, but I'd see it with you, and I was like, now I see why Brendan and DT they talk about you the way that they do, because those are the only two coaches that I'm familiar with that I yeah. know personally to the way they say it. But I was just like, oh no, she she's about what she is. But then, man, you have our personal conversation, and I just said, man, I said you you just I, I don't you're just an amazing person. Thank you. And I and I just want to say for you, the little short time that I've met you, you've definitely been an inspiration to me because I was dealing with some stuff a couple of weeks ago and I called you up and I was just mm-hmm. like, 
I don't know how I'm going to deal with this or how should I deal with this. And you and you told me how to deal with it. How should I go about dealing with that? So I, I just want to thank you. But um, where can they find your book? Well, it's uh, it's at Amazon. Mm -hmm. And you can just look it up under my name, Karen Bettis Davis. It's also um, Walmart. And I believe it's in Choice Books as well. Oh, wow. And we're working to get... Um, uh, we're working to get my second book out. Uh, okay. okay. It's called God's Playbook. Um, and it started out where I was just going to teach them from Ephesians, the third chapter, to everything there is a season. Um, and it just branched off from there where we started talking about, you know, the mentality that it takes to win, mm -hmm. how you win with honor, mm -hmm. you know. And I would write them devotionals about the things that they were going through. You know, we would get messages that kids were going to fight our kids on the field and things of like that. And so we talked to them about, you know, keeping your composure. So I would write them devotionals about, you know, men of God who kept their devotion. One of one of their favorites that I preached about was Caleb, you okay. know, and Caleb. Uh, you know, is one of the 12 spies. And when they go to discover the land, you know, there are 10 spies that are afraid mm -hmm. and they, you know, they don't want to go and take the land. And Caleb pulls his knife out on them and says, oh, no, this is ours. We're going to get it. And um, and so, you know, the children of Israel are disobedient. They end up walking around for 40 years. But at Caleb, at 80 years old, Caleb says, where's my mountain? And it's interesting because Caleb's name means dog. Oh, wow. And so, you know, I, I, I would ask them every Friday night, where my dog's at? <laughs> Who was willing to fight? Are you willing to pull the knife out on your teammate to say, hey, you need to do your job because it takes all of us, you know, to win this game. Mm -hmm. You don't have time to let him sit over there and get an attitude. You don't have time to allow your te your teammate to get mad, you know, and to have a bad play. No, you got to talk to him. You got to pull that thing out on him if you need to, because you got to get his got to get his mind right because we got to get this. Wow. Were you on the field and talking to, were you allowed on the field during the time, during the season at all? Or were you like in the locker room or giving the pregame speeches or what? I mean. Well, I, I always say me and Daryl tag team preach because I would preach to him on Thursday nights. And then uh, if you've ever been in the locker room with, with uh, Coach Overton, by the time he gets done talking to you, you will run through a brick wall. And so we just kind of sandwiched, sandwiched them in. There was some Friday nights like this last year, we really did a lot of talking like this was a push to get us there. Mm -hmm. We had what we had, mm -hmm. but we needed some kids to really make it snap. I don't know that they were sure that after like a TJ Bush left that mm -hmm. they could really do it again. Yeah, right. And so and then. You know, there was always something going on. There was always some kind of confusion. There was always some sort of an of an attack. And then they were having issues. You know, you had mothers that were sick and, you know, and um, a lot of things that were going on with the kids. And mm -hmm. so emotionally, they were just kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I told him, I said, when I walked on the field two years ago, I knew we were going to do it. The first time I walked out on the field, I knew. We were there. I would be in the stands and I had shirts, you know, that said, uh, ODU, here we come. And people would laugh at me. Wow. But I knew we were going. I had yeah. seen the vision. I knew that we were going to get there. And um, this year, you know, I looked, I wasn't so sure. Mm -hmm. But there were a couple of guys, uh, uh, Makai. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, who's going to be my man this year? He volunteered, EJ. You know, there were a couple of people, you know, who stepped up and said, listen, I, you know, I'll step in those places. I'll do my job. Uh, I think EJ, who is now at Wake Forest, I think he did everybody's job. He, I looked up. He was kicking the ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was doing some of everything. I mean, he was doing some of everything. But, you know, it was a different type of mental grind that we had to work through this year, mm -hmm. you know, in order for us to really get there. And then, you know, when you have success, success, if you're not careful, success can tear you apart as a team. Mm -hmm. So it was the goal this year to keep us together. Okay. And, you know, one of the most difficult things that you have to deal with with young kids is their parents. Oh, my God. Uh, because parents, you know, they think about their child. That's it. They're not thinking about the whole entire picture. So if you have someone like a Jeff Overton Jr., who is getting scholarship after scholarship after scholarship, and your kid is performing great, sometimes parents don't understand. And then the other thing is that sometimes it's just genetics. Right. 
Thank you. We yeah. won two state championships with a center that was 5'10". That's unheard of. Yeah, and that's why I said, man, I said, how does Springs going to beat these people? I'm not worried about this stuff. You know, but looking at some of those guys, I said, these guys are small. Big, The big, nasty Walt did his job he at 5'10". Did. He did. I even look at the quarterback. I'm yeah, the like, quarterback is 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, I think I'm taller than Tristan. <laughs> but he scored more points last year than any quarterback in the nation. I was like, we, I said, I said, we ain't worried about that. I said, this lady crazy. We we, 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 we going to beat them. We ain't worried about that. That's why. I was talking my trash, and I was like, I just come over there. I was like, oh my god, I gotta come on the field. Well, actually, I did. I just said, I, I, I can't let this happen. Y'all, they were talking at the beginning. Mm -hmm. I was like, Jeff, I was oh, like, Jeff's okay. gonna always talk. Yeah, I was like, ah, right, we, we, we gonna get it in. And it was just, but the thing that I like that you know because I think the Virginia High School they try to paint this picture, yeah, that it was like this. This beef between Highland Springs and Freedom. Never was. And it never was. It never was. And I was just like, what are y'all talking about, man? The coaches respect one another. Yeah. They had talked during that week. Like, like, I think it was maybe like that Monday or Tuesday before. Yeah. Like I said, we were all talking amongst each other. We was all on live on a Monday yeah. night. I'm like, what are y'all talking about? Yeah. And and, and and like I said, at the end of the day, you know, y'all y'all was a better team that day. Y'all won the state championships and y'all earned them. Yeah. And it was much respect. And I yeah. looked at it and said, man, you know what? Uh, Y'all ain't got nothing but my respect from this point on. And everything else has been history. And, you know, we, we stand on that because we have literally had to earn everything, both on the field and off the field, um, you know, without the support of people that, honestly, I felt like we should have had support. After the first state championship, I right. felt like you would, think. you would think that, you know, we would get the kind of we would get support, you know, that mm -hmm. we wanted a parade and we couldn't we just wanted a parking lot parade around the school where right. we, because, you know, we're also connected to a youth organization, Playmakers. Right. And so those kids were playing for national championships in Florida mm -hmm. the same week that we were playing for a state championship. Wow. So. Teams like my son's team, they went all the way to the game and they lost um, in the finals. Wow! Because he was here coaching free, you know, because right. he was here coaching coach the high school. Coach high school. You know, you had other coaches that coached those teams that now they had to rely on those dads and things. And so, but those kids love and they look up to the freedom players. And so, we wanted to just have an opportunity where maybe we could have, you know, a little parking lot parade where, you know, the little kids could come out because remember this football thing is about college, right? That's right. This football thing for us is about college. Mm -hmm. And we beat that into those kids, you know, when they're six years old, you're doing this so that you, so that you are not an expense to your parents. That's You're right. doing this. I remember having the conversation with my son at 11 years old. And I said to him, we're about to have a grown man conversation right in this parking lot. Because if you're telling me, because we lived in Stafford, if you're telling me that you want me to drive 45 minutes to practice three times a week, and then on the weekend, we're going to travel to Philly. We're going to travel to New York. We're going to travel to Florida. Hello. We're going to travel all these places. Um, um yeah, we college is on you, player. That, 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 and, and see, why don't see? This is the problem. You get these parents sit up here talk about. Well, I don't think you should put all that pressure on the kid. Um, no, we're gonna have this going for conversation mm -hmm. because if I gotta go because you want to play for this particular team mm -hmm. and it costs gas, money, food, and depending on Hotel. they <laughs> hotels, yeah, lodging. So you tell me that I gotta do all this. Like, yeah, we're gonna have. Yeah, people are making deals. Yes, and if we and if you telling me that it's wrong for me to do that, then I'm gonna tell you like that. Ready to say it on on coming to America that I don't want to be right. Yeah, <laughs> and I think that there's nothing wrong with making a kid responsible for their future. Right. And um, I don't think there's anything wrong with. And then I want to say this, too, because, you know, I, you and I talked about it last week. There was a, a national bishop who put up a post and was saying that when you see black boys, tell them that they can be entrepreneurs. They can be, you know, architects. They can be all these things. They just don't have to be sports players. Right. I said, but do you realize the odds of making it into the NFL? A million kids every year sign up to play youth football. Yep. Um. I, I think about 13% of those end up playing in college. And then of those, 0.2 of them, less than 1% of them end up playing in the NFL. Mm -hmm. So, so number one, we should be celebrating 
a young man who used his gifts and talents because see the thing about an athlete that goes to that level is he has, not only does he have to be gifted physically, but he also has to be incredibly intelligent. That's right. And so, and so an athlete is using his body and his mind. Right. And so we have to change the narrative of seeing these young black men that raise to these levels as, as, you know, dumb jocks or less right. than or inferior. People have no idea the mentality that it takes to be a winner at that level That's and right. the things that they go through. They are to be celebrated, but why can't they have both? And the purpose of college is for them to have choices mm -hmm. in their careers. Mm -hmm. um, one of the young men called me yesterday uh, number one, he called me because he was very happy because we've been praying for about two years for his mom to get a kidney. Mm. So can you imagine this kid? He had the hardest time going to college because his mother was getting dialysis and she was waiting for a kidney mm -hmm. and she was deteriorating every year. That young man called me yesterday. The happiest he had ever been because his mom got a kidney. Wow. So when people Amen. say they don't know what I do and they don't understand what I do, I live for those moments. And see, and, and that's what I'm saying. You, you, you've you mentored a lot of people and a lot in the community. And this is, like I said, what Dr. O, he always talked about. Continue talking about some of those other people that you mentor. You've mentored people like in the community, outside the community, NFL. Just talk about some of those people that you've got. You came in contact with. Well, you know, I, uh, in fact, uh, when wow. I wanted um, uh, Josh Fuga, who is a standout player at Virginia Tech, mm -hmm. um, he, I met him because he saw my son playing and then he was on the field yelling for my kid just as loud as I was. And I was like, who is this? Mm -hmm. And they became best friends. Wow. And um, so when I told him about the chaplaincy job, uh, he put me in contact with the chaplain at Virginia Tech. And so he mentored me. Wow. Um, but prior to that, I go to Texas. So I have uh, a godchild who plays at Sam Houston, but originally he played at, at um, North Shore, which is another freedom in Texas. Okay. They've won a bunch of state championships. And uh, so I go to Texas. His parents are pastors. I go to their church. Mm -hmm. I meet a young man. They asked me to give the young man a word. So I just start prophesying to him. I said, I see you in the NFL stadium. You know, I don't know what you do. Yada, yada. Turns out his name was Ben Tate and he played for the Houston Texans. Texas, yep, yep, wow. <laughs> and so, you know, we met, uh, he asked me, could we have a conversation? We said, and we had this conversation and then I mentored him for years. Wow. Um, he is still, you know, one of those people that I pick up the phone for. Uh, and so uh, I met Rasheed Wallace when he was at the end of his career. Wow. God allowed me to give him some wisdom, you know, for the latter part of his career. Right. Uh, man, yeah. you know, he will put me in contact with people and just give me the wisdom to just kind of encourage them, you know, where they are. Uh, and then with Team Loaded, um, mm. you know, my my brother's organization, man, I remember we were selling um, uh, chili dogs and donuts, you know, <laughs> raising money. Wow. Now they're sponsored by Adidas, you know, they're nationally ranked and they put almost 20 kids in, in the NBA. And I have sat on my brother's foot, you know, on the, on the steps of the front of his house with kids like Frank Mason and had real conversations with them, met Thumb Maker. We fed so many wow. <laughs> of yeah. these children that are now in the NBA who just want somebody to see them as a person, mm -hmm. to understand the complexities of their life, mm -hmm. the great sacrifices that they have had to make mm -hmm. um, in order to get to where they are mm -hmm. and to, and to be seen as a human being. Wow. And, 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 to, and that's why I was going to go into, you, you, we talked about Ty White, coach White, mm -hmm. you know, talk about, talk about, you know, your relationship or the type of person you, you think he is as, as far as what he does for the community too. Cause he's real big in the community. He's an amazing, he's an amazing man. Um, you know, the, they started out together at Petersburg high school. Well, actually they started with another organization mm -hmm. and some things were going on there and that's why they started team loaded. Right. So right. they started team loaded, you know, we would be down, 
you know, in these country roads down here in Richmond, you know, they would be doing tournaments and stuff. We would be getting up, you know, the day after Thanksgiving, selling donuts in front of Walmart, just doing whatever we could do to raise money, you know, for this organization. They started out at Petersburg, you know, and Frank Mason was the breakout star yeah, Petersburg at least, Petersburg. Yeah. And then they got the job at uh, at um, John Marshall. But also they started to do so well and perform so well that um, Adidas came into the picture. Mm -hmm. And so now they're sponsored by Adidas and they, they are one of uh, the premier teams for Adidas. And they they just came back from playing John Marshall. Just They won their state championship. They're mm -hmm. six. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I meant to bring my rings today because I had three of them. I have one. Oh, uh oh, so you showing <laughs> off, man. See, I ain't, even, see, I ain't even know you was that deep. Oh, yeah, we got hardware. We got okay. hardware. We have hardware. See, 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 she everywhere. She ain't just that freedom. She she got them all with. See, and you play that Phoebus. I can't rock with you. I started to bring them, but, you know, I had three, but my brother had six, you know, so, I'm, mm -hmm. so we're chasing each other, wow. you know. But the result of that is the lives of kids that, they get to change, you know, and, you know, we'll have Thanksgiving dinner or something. And, you know, it's like three, seven footers there, Wow. you know, and you're like, what's your name? Oh, my name is Thumb Maker, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, and so you get to meet all of these, all of these kids yeah. and uh, then they get older mm -hmm. and you get to go to the games, you know, and you get to watch them play and. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and when they get to certain places in their career mm -hmm. and they have trouble, they, they, they remember, they remember mm -hmm. and they pick up the phone and they call and they say, I need some advice. I need some wisdom. You know, I, I just need somebody to talk to. And see, those are the, and, and like I said, see, you never know these things. The only thing we always see was on the surface. Yeah. But I never knew that when I came on there trolling, <laughs> <laughs> that you had all these connections, yeah, or uh, just that that uh, this background. I I never knew that it was just like, okay, here we gotta go another freedom parent because I did call y'all delusional. I think you I did, did. <laughs> you did. But I wasn't. Yeah, I was like these parents delusional, man. I'm yeah. not like you know. We but I stand on what we I just said. Had a word from yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> look, see, that was the word, right? <laughs> so I said y'all delusional, but but but. When I got to know everybody, mm -hmm. it was just like, wow. We were and family. I thought, we were, it was family. You said, no, you one of us now. You don't know it, but you one of us. And I was like, this lady going to embrace me after I said all this stuff about y'all. Mm -hmm. but, but it just we've shows the character. We've been so much together. We've had to bury children. Wow. We've, we've lost kids who, who we thought could, you know, take it all. Mm -hmm. You know, and, um, you know, we lost a kid, O'Shea, in a car accident. Some players who were just phenomenal, mm -hmm. you know, we lost them to the streets. Wow. You know, and so that is, I think, why. I think that's probably one of the number one reasons why Daryl really wanted me to do this is because you don't know the heartache of seeing a child with all of that potential. And you can't undo that grass. Mm -hmm. from the streets you know what I mean mm -hmm. and um so you see them and you realize that their life could have gone another way um and so college is really just about giving them an opportunity to make a choice in life some of them they're just repeating what they've seen right and so our job is just to show them something different to show them the possibility of something different um and um you know uh if we can do that and it can be their choice. I had, I had one athlete call me. He said, you know, I got to college and I realized that um, I don't really like playing football anymore. I don't like the business side of it. Mm -hmm. So I said, OK, what's your plan? Mm -hmm. And he literally had a plan. Mm -hmm. He had a job lined up. He knew how much money he was going to be making. Mm -hmm. um, he knew what he wanted to do. He knew, you know, why he wanted to come home. He knew that that was going, he felt like that was going to be the best road for him. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, you've thought it through. You have a plan. And just, just leave the school in good standing mm -hmm. so that when you decide to go back, if you decide to go back, you still can. We have a kid right now, Jordan Leach, who graduated, I think, in 2019, mm -hmm. um, decided that he didn't want to take a scholarship and go to school. Right now, he's getting offers to go play every day. He went to a JUCO in California, mm -hmm. had an incredible season last year. And so I looked up yesterday, and he got another offer from Virginia Wesleyan. 
you know, to come and play college football. Mm. So, you know, those seeds that you plant with them, you never know when, you know, you're going to see the harvest in those things. Yeah, right. But you do. And so you just want to give them, especially the world that they're living in right now. You just want to give them options in their life and you want them to see that, you know, they can be more than just some of the negative stereotypes, you mm -hmm. know, that are out here. We do have some that, you know, have decided mm -hmm. that they wanted to go into music and, mm -hmm. you know, some of them, they're doing OK. Right. You know, in that. And, you know, when I see them, they come to the games and everything. I hug their neck. I'm happy to see them. They're always, you know, hey, Mama Karen. Because, see, that's the thing that the parents don't understand. My son would always fuss at me because I'd be in the stands. <laughs> and if your kid messed up, I called your kid's name. Yeah, you sure? Yeah. And my son would say, you can't do that. But I said, but they're thinking about their kid. I'm thinking about all these kids. Right. And these kids. All your kids. And they're listening to me. Right. They're listening to me. One of the kids told me, he said, the thing, his name is Jeremy Ford. He went to college, played four years, got his degree. Mm -hmm. You know, he's out here, a grown man working now. But he said, the thing I miss the most is hearing you in the stands. And see, a lot of people don't understand it. Because I know when, when I was, you know, coaching, actually when I stopped coaching, I got in, you know, I was, became back up being a parent again. Those kids look for that inspiration. They do. Like, especially if you know them. Yeah. But people who on the outside, they don't know, they think that you out there just trying to criticize them by the kid. Yeah. You're not doing that. Mm -mm. You think I'm just going to go out there, I, and I don't know these kids, and I'm just going to just mm -hmm. publicly do that? They'd be like, no, 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 Coach Larry, we want you, because you know what you talk about. So we we look up there, or we hear, we like, well, we got to go ahead and do stuff. So people who... I will call them these 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 casual fans. They really yeah. don't know. They're just yeah. there because the kid, and they just waiting. For, they take the kid to practice, come back. They don't really have any interaction. Yeah. They don't know what they're doing. And he's your kid. You just right. see him moving. You don't know he overshot the gap. Right. They, they don't know that. Yeah. They, and so they were like, come on, you can't do that to the kids. And, yeah. You know why? You, you're not. Oh, shut yeah. up. You're fussing at the ref, but you don't know that that boy that almost took his head off. Right. You know, exactly. With that face mask. You don't, you, don't, you don't always understand what the calls and stuff are. But not only that, you're not there to see the perfection with which they practice. Yep. So they know how to execute. That's one of the things that about the coaches at Freedom. I've been around a lot of coaches. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been a, I've been a lot around a lot of managers who call themselves coaches where they manage talent. Mm -hmm. But I have actually there you go. Freedom actually develops. Ta I'm not going to say freedom because we're, I'm trying to get used to our new name. Hey, 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 feel but, 40. Uh, <laughs> but our family, we actually develop players. Mm -hmm. They have a vision for what those kids are going to be. And they push those kids into those positions, even when those kids don't believe in themselves. I've seen the last couple of weeks that y'all, that the coach has been out there at 5 a.m. Yeah. And I was like, and it's not even football season. Mm -mm. Hey, well, see. first of all, football season never ends. Well, now it doesn't. You're right. It, like it that is our hashtag is Hayfield by 40, but our other hashtag should be hashtag football season never ends. It, it, it never ends because I was like, I said, are you serious? I was like, what motivation? Like, you got to really love it. Yeah. To be out there before that, I ain't had nothing to eat yet. I ain't got yeah. the cold all of my eye. And I'm out here playing, practicing, mm -hmm. and y'all yelling at me at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. Y'all already working. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. We're already working. Well, and and that's the thing that people don't understand about us is that while while you're taking breaks, we're we're still working. While you're sleeping, we're working. Now, you know, I, I'm I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna be on topic, but I'm gonna kind of go off topic. Sure. Now, you know, the fair Hayfield is in with Fairfax County. Right? Yeah. Now, you know what I say. You know, you know, you guys are coming over to a new team, and you know some of those parents that's already has been there, some of those Karens, mm -hmm. you know, and some of those, you know, outspoken parents. They they want to see little Johnny Rocket and and and, and, and little Timmy. Mm -hmm. How you know how now you're gonna to have to counsel people through that. How sure. you think they're going to embrace that? Well, I think number one, one of the things that I've learned is that there is a different language for every socioeconomic bracket. Okay. And so when you're talking to uh, you know, um 
to, you know, a, a poor economic bracket, there's a certain level of conversation when you're talking to a middle class family, you know, we're talking to wealthy people, there's, there's all of these different cultures and groups have their own language or vernacular. Mm -hmm. And so you have to learn how to speak to them in their language. Fortunately, I come from where they come from. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't come from, you know, things that freedom. So, but people are people. And as an educator, as a pastor, I think it's your responsibility to be able to reach all of those people. So, you know, I can I can stand on business when I need to stand on business, but I can also, <laughs> you know, you know, let's have a conversation about, you know, Jimmy's potential. And let's let's really look at this, mm -hmm. you know, from a different perspective mm -hmm. and realize that um, you have given your child everything, but he's going to have to now earn it. That's right. And this is a skill that you want any man to have in his life. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we have to approach those things from a different place. But I have to say, you know, in the parents meeting, um, people were they were wonderful. They were welcoming. Um, they were with the program. They told us a lot of stuff that that were problems where we were. That it wasn't going to be problems where we are now. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you something. Okay. The A.D., when the night that we were all there after the parents left, he closed the door and he started talking to us. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that I absolutely loved about this man is that number one, he wants to win. It helps. And he wants to win it all. He wants to win basketball, girls, basketball, football, baseball. He wants, as we would say, he wants to run the board. Mm -hmm. That's my kind of guy, number one. Yeah, I like him. But the other thing is he's written a lot of checks already for the things that we needed. We came in, we needed new helmets. The helmets mm -hmm. were not the kind of helmets that, that we believe that, that, you know, players should be wearing, right. you know, they had to replace equipment. Um, and, and he is doing Everything that an AD should be doing to make sure that that the program is run successfully, and that's all a coach, you know, what the coaches need because yes. you got that support, and that's and that's why I, I talk so highly of Harley Daniel at Highland Springs. Mm -hmm. For him to be the youngest AD, I think Harry Lee has to be 34, 35 years mm -hmm. old, and he gets it. Yeah. You know, and he just take, hey, you know, if I got to take one for the team. And that's why I thought that, you know, not trying to take the, you know, to shine away from you guys when that Lake Braddock situation happened. And that thing kind of made, it made news up there where you got because mm – -hmm. We didn't you know, want to shake the hand of the opposing teams yeah. because of the things that were going on during the game. Yeah. And where Harry Lee said, you know what, I'm going to make this call. I'm, I can't let them shake hands because of all our brawl is going to take out, you know, it's going to break out. Yeah. And I thought that was the right thing for him to do. But, of course, mm -hmm. they get back up there and it was a completely, totally different yeah. scenario. Well, That's the what the same thing that happened last night. They lied and said the LSU walked off the field. For the national anthem, they were off the court. They weren't there. <sighs> but so people create narratives, and those are the kind of things that you have to teach children to become immune to. Right. Because it goes along. Honestly, it goes along with success. Nobody's bothering you when you're losing. No, they, they're nobody's not. checking for Kogan when we beating them. You know, right? Like 90, 91 to like fourteen in the first. Nobody's checking. You know, for them. But when you're winning. People look at everything that they do. They scrutinize everything that they do. And again, they know they can't beat you mm -hmm. on the field. They know physically, play for play, we are loaded. So they knew they couldn't beat us that way. So what do they do? They try to get in your head space. Yep. And so the kids, you know, they would get on the Internet every week and they would talk junk and you know of course my favorite team is Alabama Roll Tide and Nick Saban and uh, you know and so he calls it rat poison and so we just you know and I said if they would just ever learn that we love the rat poison mm -hmm. they might you know they might have a chance but because they don't know that they don't know they just continue to feed the beast but what we have taught those children is how to use that Mm -hmm. Not to go out there emotionally and fight, but mm -hmm. how to use that to dominate. And and that's where I thought, you know, where I thought with Coach Malky, with Ellie, speaking of LSU, you was talking about how she defends those girls. Mm -hmm. And I know she's, you know, a white woman from Texas, and these are some black girls from Baltimore mm -hmm. and Atlanta, Georgia. But I have no problem with them being who they are. Yeah. 
you know, because you get like, you know, and I'm kind of going to go pen and back and forth, but I did, nobody really talked about that article that LA Times guy called those guy, girls dirty debutantes. Yeah. How did that make you feel when you, when you heard that? Because I, I tried to gaslight it a little bit. It's like, okay, where, where are y'all at on this? Because nobody's taking up for these sisters. You know, I was really infuriated. And I had been really trying to catch my breath long enough to write about it. <laughs> um, because I think that one of the unfortunate things and the expectations for black women is that they want us to be likable. But if you don't like us in the first place, mm -hmm. then there's nothing that we could do. There was nothing that Angel Reese could have ever done to have become their media darling. Right. They already wanted Caitlyn to be it. Mm -hmm. She just happened to lose that right. year. Right. So there was nothing that she could have done to change what the expectations are. We have to understand the culture that we live in. Mm -hmm. And so if you have the choice of choosing a black young, outspoken, confident, fearless, will put your butt in the paint kind of player mm -hmm. like Angel Reese mm -hmm. over a white, technically sound, mm -hmm. um, incredibly gifted white female basketball player mm -hmm. in America, mm -hmm. who are you going to choose? Mm. And so that's just the reality and the state of where we in, where we in, you know, um, politics has driven a lot of the racism that is it erupted in this nation. Yep. And so now um, Twitter was so vicious last night I had to get off because if I didn't, I was going to do them like I've had to do some of them men, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I know <laughs> you know, in were. the chat because they were vicious before the game could start. They were vicious and they don't realize this is a this is a young adult. This is a young adult, right? Who does not have the wisdom of years mm -hmm. to take in the level of visceral hate, right? That has been pushed her way. Um, now, for me, I say the future is safe w as long as there are Angel Reese's in the world, right? As long as she's willing to speak truth to power, mm -hmm. whether people like her or not, if she's willing to take that, you know, and as a woman, as a female apostle, no less, not just a pastor, but an apostle, mm -hmm. you know, you have to learn to be a train, a trailblazer and you have to learn that, you know, I liken it to what they do, you know, for running backs in order to train them to run. They go through this gauntlet where they hit them in the head, mm -hmm. you know, to make sure that they, you know, keep them, keep themselves and keep their thoughts when they're being hit. They hit him in the hips you know, to make sure, you know, that they know how to stay stable. They mm -hmm. hit him in that arm to make sure they learn how to hold that ball. They hit him in the knees mm -hmm. so that they learn how to stand and run through, mm -hmm. you know, all of those blocks and keep running. It's a gauntlet to be a trailblazer mm -hmm. and especially for black females mm -hmm. and to see her doing that. And then to see Flanger with her, you know, boisterous right. self for her to have these dual careers. And then yep. the other thing that was really upsetting was the money that came to them. Mm -hmm. They're marketable. Right. And, you know, so we're still having these conversations about NIL and all of these things. But here you are with these big personalities, you know, Baltimore Barbie, the yep, Bayou right, Barbie. Right, Bayou Barbie, yep. You know, and so, and then here's Flanger who has this incredible story about right. her father being a rapper. She grows up to be a rapper. She's able to do both of these things. She's charismatic. Mm -hmm. She's good in the camera. And she's a freshman. And we hadn't even talked about Miss Juju yet. Yeah, we ain't even got into talking talk with that young lady, even though she she lost last night, but she man, lost last night, but, but she's a baby. But she, yeah, she's a baby. She's a baby. Mm, which, what, yeah, tell me your thoughts on Juju. The future, first of all, I say anytime I have never met a Juju that wasn't a dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we yeah, 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 day. yeah, yeah. You got a couple of them over there. You write all about that. My baby Juju going to Clemson. Never, I've never, you know, and so, but for her to have that kind of poise. Mm -hmm. For her to direct that team. But even last night, I saw she's still a child. Yeah. You know, at the end, I really saw, like, this is a baby. This is a teenager. Um, but she has the heart of a warrior. Mm -hmm. And last night, after that game, I wanted to be in the locker room because I wanted to hold her face in my hands. And I wanted to tell her, you have nothing to be ashamed about. You are a winner and you will continue 
to be a winner. Don't let these people see your tears Mm -hmm. because they see those things as a weakness and they look for anything. And they ran that tape of her crying all night long. But what you should have run was how she was putting it in their face. Mm-hmm. That, that's, that's what you should have run. But so we have to teach the younger ones this. You know, someone told me one time, baby, you going that, uh, you know, I was an executive for Federal Express. And, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, we always had these competitions and we were trying to get this Bravo Zulu, which is the highest award. And mm-hmm. I made one mistake and I was upset about it. And another female manager, she snatched me up out of my chair. She took me to the bathroom. She said, you crying here, but you don't ever cry out there. Mm-hmm. And now I'm a cry baby. I will cry. I cry when we win. I cry when we lose. Like I'm a cry baby. So it was hard for me because I'm just a, an emotional person. Mm-hmm. But she told me that she said, when you stand out there, you stand out there for all of us. Oh, wow. And so you have to look them in their face and say, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Yep. Wow. And so, you know, I just, um, her future is bright. Um, more, they were talking about in the betting industry, how they're making so much more money because they're betting on women's sports now, right, which like never they thing. never have. Which never and so I've been saying, this is the year of the woman. Mm-hmm. If you pay attention to what is happening, um, it is the year we have more women that now are coaches for the NFL. Mm-hmm. We have more, um, refs, female mm-hmm. refs, refs that were out there, mm-hmm. um, you know, women taking positions. You have Jalen Hurts, who's my baby. That's yep. my QB1. His management His team. Yep. You see the deal that she brought to the table, mm-hmm. you know, for you know for him. And so, you know, I want women to know that we can step into any place and we can do well. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, this thing about uh, the difference is God created us all to be effective and powerful. When you look at the women in the Bible, they did some incredible things. When you look at women like Deborah, who was a judge, Mm -hmm. you know, when you look at Junia, who was an apostle and the, and Paul said that she was a great, that she was great amongst all of the apostles. Mm -hmm. So she was a bad girl in a world where women were property. Yep. That is true. And so we can be successful in any environment. And so who, who, who going to tell me that I can't step into the arena of football and I can't be effective? Not only that, I think my voice is effective because in America, we have so many broken families. We have yep. so many parents that are led by single moms. So yep. coaches can say some things to you. Right. But there's some things that you just need a mama voice for. Yep, that is true. That that, that definitely is. That is <clears throat> I got to agree with that. I definitely agree with that. Whew, you you just broke that one down right there. I can't, I don't need her to come back to that one. <laughs> <laughs> you do. You do. Like I said, sometimes you like you, you you yeah, you go get your daddy, but sometimes you need that mama voice. Sometimes you need you, that yeah, mama. yeah, you do. I cannot boys love their moms. They do. They do. And it's it's, it's no denying that, you know, and 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 I and I tell people that all the time. It's like we just have to understand that. And if we can all come together and collectively understand that, because then why are we having this back and forth and this gender war and this 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 about this and the third? It's just like it's just stupid. It's going to take all of us. Right. It literally is going to take all of us Mm -hmm. um, in order to make this country as great as it needs to be. Mm-hmm. It's going to take all of us, not just, you know, us as African Americans, but yep. you know, the civil rights movement were it wasn't just us. It was right. uh Jewish people, it was white people, it was you Thank know, you. Latinos. It is going to it was take everybody. Every one of us. And I really think that's one of the beautiful things about what we're about to see at Hayfield too. Is that we are going to we're going to prove to them that um we can develop players. It doesn't matter where they come from. It doesn't matter what the color is. We got we got freshmen at six six. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I walked in there, and it was like I had walked into Saks Fifth Avenue, and they had a sale. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, I, like I said, I plan on being there. I plan on you know being on the sidelines and coming to those practices this year. I yeah. plan on in it because you told me I'm one of y'all. You want now, that? You know, now, now, you know, what, but like I told you, I'm still 804. 
I all day. It. But I, I, I just appreciate y'all just embracing me, taking me in. Cause well, listen, I'm seven five seven. Yeah, look, uh, look. P H O B E U S. Phoebus is in my blood. Now, anyway, take it that away from you. Ain't it? nobody gonna ever take that away from me. However, like I told him, uh, freedom would have beat Phoebus. See? And that hurt me to say that, but 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 that's how much I believe in us. I'm trying to remember because 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 your brother, we talked about that. He, I think he asked me about it was about freedom and Phoebus or something. I said Phoebus was a really good team, mm -hmm. but offensively, freedom was just differently. But that defense, freedom, I mean, Phoebus had was oof. Yeah. So. But, you know, I mean, that story, we were hoping that that story would happen this year. It, it didn't happen. No. Um, you know, um, I, in my heart, I believe this year we'll get our third championship. Um, and then we'll just continue to build. And, well, of course, my goal, because I have a goal for these coaches as well, my goal is to see these coaches – in college and in the NFL, not just for the kids to progress, but I sent my son and I sent Coach Overton when they released the salaries for Alabama. I, I sent him a text. This is your future. That's what I believe. I believe that they can coach on a higher level. I Those believe guys that they're coach. that gifted. Those and so I'm coach. constantly pushing. You know, I counsel the coaches and stuff too. talk to them through things. I just think that when you are successful, you need somebody that believes in you. And and you can see that because of either the people that I didn't know that didn't even know them that hit they said no those guys they they's in their blood they can coach mm -hmm. and 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 like I said it I, I learned a lot this year so you know again you can't judge a book by its cover mm -mm. you know and and I formed a lot of new relationships so like I said it's it's more than meets the eye mm -hmm. and you know I think honestly the thing that really got me started was that we knew at eight years old that Christopher was going to be a coach. Wow. We knew at eight when the other kids were watching cartoons, he was watching ESPN. When the other kids were playing, he was in there talking trash with the old men about the teams and stuff. And he was right. And they would be upset because he, what, what are you doing in here? Right. But he was right. He was we right. knew that he had an eye for it, an intellect for it. And we knew that this, this was exactly where he would land in his life when he was eight years old. Well, shout out to Chris. Like I said, you know, I, I talked to him a few times. Really good guy. And like I said, much success as I know he's trying to get one of those, those head coaching jobs that's mm -hmm. out there. So yes. wish him nothing but the best. Yes. But no, but I thank you. I thank you, Karen. I, I just don't, I didn't think he was going to be sitting here. I, I didn't think we would be doing this. But we got a lot of work. You know, we plan out a lot of things that's planned on yeah. that we're going to be doing behind the scenes. And like I always tell you, you my once a week, I got to call you once a week. And if I don't call you, then there's something wrong or you don't call me. But no, thank you for, for this whole insight. I learned m a lot more than what we do when we talk on the phone. Yeah. I thank yeah. you. Like I told you, I, I think you have something special here. I think your the podcast and the way that you handle things are very unique. Um, I think one of the most mm -hmm. unique things about you is that you actually care about the people that you interview, that you're not just trying to build your brand, but you actually love what you do and the people that you do it for. Thank you. I love the basketball moms things. Oh, that yeah. You do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tomorrow night. Right on. Oh, tonight at eight o'clock. It's tonight. <laughs> Today, Tuesday, right? Yeah. Basketball moms tonight. Yeah. And, and I, I love that. I love that you give very unique people platforms and that you honor the people that have come before you, that you bridge the color lines in ways, you know, that other people's don't other people don't. Uh, and I think you have a good I, I, I want you to know that you have a good name. But, but thank you. Which thank is you. important. But thank you. Some other people may, you know, don't think so but you know they know how i don't really care we don't worry about them you, you know you, you know they, they know i don't care yeah and if they don't know they better realize because <laughs> i really don't and zach will tell you that too i don't really too much care about that but thank you for making the trip down thank you and for, and for coming on and and we got to get you back on look you don't look you're a regular now so don't feel like that any time that when that new book comes out and anything that you want to do feel free to call me you will always have a seat here Thank you. you know. And we also got to talk about what you want to do, too. 
Yep. You know, you want to build an alliance for coaches in the area. Yes, yes. And so, you know, I, I want to get back behind that vision. I want to help you. I think it is so important. You know, I think we suffered a lot because we didn't have a lot of relationships with other coaches and yep. we didn't know how to deal, you know, with the powers that be in some of the situations that we were going through. And it just would have been nice to have had, you know, other yep. coaches Thanks. around and supporting. And so that. I still want to help you do that, to we're open that up, that. push that, you know, bring them together. You know, lawyers have an association, yeah, doctors so have an association. The same thing. It's, yeah. And so I, I really believe in that vision and I want to help you to do that. So yeah, I try to tell y'all that y'all think that I'm this type of person to think that I'm not this, but I, she said it and I need her to tell y'all. <laughs> See? So for all y'all that think that y'all that hate that I hate y'all so much that I don't like the coaches and I criticize, you heard what she just said. Yeah. So if I'm all of that, then why would she say that I didn't have to coach her to do that either? <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, we got to get up out of here. Um, any shout outs that you want to go? We got a minute before we do that. Well, you know, again, I want to um, shout out uh, Coach Daryl Overton, the coaching staff, you know, at Hayfield, my son, Christopher Davis, the best offensive uh, coordinator, O-line coach in the state of Virginia. <laughs> um um, you know, of course, to my mom and my dad and my family, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's really an honor, you know, to to be here. And I feel like I'm living in my dad's legacy, um, you know, for his family. Um, and, um, you know, I, of course, to my husband who gives me and I, it may sound like an ugly word, but, you know, I never get any pushback from my husband from the things that I want to do. Mm -hmm. He's he's he is the wind beneath, you know, everything that I do. And so I just really thank him for that. Um, if you want to reach me, uh, you can reach me. My website is kbdavisworldwide.com. You can reach me on Facebook. It's either Apostle Karen Bettis Davis or Karen Bettis Davis. If you have a child that you think needs some personal coaching, mm -hmm. a conversation, any of those things, you know, I'm developing a coaching business for that. My ultimate goal is to create a chaplaincy program to teach um you know, to bring more chaplains into schools. Mm -hmm. I'm the first black female chaplain for three counties, for Stafford County, uh, Howard, um, 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 Prince William County, and now Fairfax, because I'm also the chaplain for the Colonial Forge track team as well. Okay. So, you know, I work in three counties in Virginia, and, um, and I want to empower other people to go out and to do the same. I'm a breath work specialist. I teach people how to breathe, you know, and settle their nervous system, you know, handle their anxiety, you know, those kind of things. And uh, so, you know, if you have an athlete that you feel like has some mental blocks and you want me to help them kind of get over those things, uh, you can reach out to me. And if you can't get in touch with her, reach out to me. So from Miss Karen Bettis Davis from Lee Mary, from my man, Zach Poston, we are out. I appreciate y'all watching the episode again today, y'all. You know, go over and make sure that y'all check out my man, rickstocker.com, for any of your home buying needs. Appreciate it. Thanks again.